You can think about your morning routine and whether or not you even have one in the exact same way that we think about the brain. You're either defaulting to something that you've always done that may no longer serve you, or you're getting deliberate and choosing to do something that's more positive and powerful because you deserve it. And that starts with your morning routine. So if you're the kind of person where the alarm goes off and you hit the snooze and then the alarm goes off again and you hit the snooze and you know eventually you roll out of bed and you step into your day and you maybe drink a big dark cup of coffee and you skip breakfast and you skip exercise and you're tired and you immediately reach for your phone and you start scrolling while you're in bed and you are putting all kinds of stuff in your brain that triggers FOMO, that triggers insecurity, that triggers anxiety, that is going to impact your mindset for the rest of the day. Mom, why are you making the bed? Why am I making the bed? Um, well, I'm making the bed even though we're checking out in the hotel this morning because every single morning I have the same simple morning routine, Ken. I get up when the alarm rings, I get moving, I get my exercise clothes on, I move my body, I then journal, do a brain dump, I make my bed, and even though we're checking out of the hotel, um, it's so important to keep to your routine because the key to changing your life is change your daily habits. The way that you start to change the big things is you change the small things. Make tiny, teeny, teeny promises to yourself and then keep them. So I have a promise to wake up and get up for myself. For years and years and years, I would get up to make the school bus. I would get up for school. I would get up because my mom was telling me to. I would get up because I had to get to work. I would get up to get my kids to school. Today, I get out of bed when the alarm rings for myself. I make the bed as a gift to myself. Now normally when I'm home, the gift is I get to come back to a nicely made bed and I have a beautiful place to lay down and dream. It's also a gift because I start my day by completing something. But it's also a gift, even though I'm checking out of this hotel this morning because I am building the foundation for all change, which is consistency. So here's how you can put this into practice. Think about what you want your morning routine to be. Come up with just one promise you're gonna to make to yourself. Is it gonna to be to get up when the alarm rings? Is it gonna to be to make your bed? Let's start with making your bed. Tomorrow morning, you're gonna wake up and you're gonna make a promise that you're gonna make your bed for yourself. Do it every morning and you are building the habit of consistency. And that habit of consistency is the backbone to all change. We got a flight to catch. I want you to just think for a minute. Because we all have, I love to use the analogy, the inner snooze button. You have these amazing ideas that bubble up, right? You've been watching people all day, and I guarantee you, like, you know, ping pong balls, boom, 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 boom. You've got an idea, oh, we should do this, we should do that. And every time you have an idea, what do you do? Boop, hit the snooze. What's the first decision you made this morning? I bet it was to go back to bed. <laughs> yep, for the first decision today, I'm 101 in 400 trillion, I'm gonna go back to sleep. And I get it, your bed is comfortable. It's cozy, it's warm. If you're lucky, you've got, you know, like somebody that you love next to you, or in my case, I've got my husband and my two kids and possibly the dog. Um, and the reason why I'm bringing up this first decision that you made today and the inner snooze alarm is because in any area of your life, that you want to change, any. There's one fact that you need to know, just one. You're never going to feel like it, <laughs> ever. No one's coming. Motivation isn't happening. You're never going to feel like it. Scientists call it activation energy. That's what they call the force required to get you to change from what you're doing on autopilot to do something new. So try this test tomorrow. You think you're so fancy, I know you're attending TED. <laughs> try this. Tomorrow morning, set your alarm for 30 minutes earlier. 
And then when it goes off, take those sheets, throw them off, and stand up and start your day. No snooze, no delay, no I'll just wait here for five seconds because Mel's not standing here. <laughs> do it. And the reason why I want you to do it is because you will come face to face with the physical, and I mean physical, force that's required to change your behavior. Do you think that somebody who needs to lose weight ever feels like going on a diet? Of course not. Do you think they ever feel like eating boiled chicken and peas instead of a croissant? I don't think so. <laughs> the activation energy required to get your ass away from your computer and out your front door to go on the walk you said that you were going to go on is the exact same amount of force that it takes you to push yourself out of a warm bed and into a cold room. Today what we're going to be talking about is we're going to be talking about the powerful connection between your mindset and your morning routine. And I'm going to give you an assignment at the end of this training. Tomorrow we're going to build on this. So this entire week what we're going to be talking about are the components to your morning because your mindset and having a powerful mindset and being deliberate about what you're going to think about and what you're not going to think about, it begins the moment you wake up. And believe it or not, how you wake up, not when, but how you wake up and the first few things that you do in the morning will dictate your mood for the rest of the day, which based on science is going to impact your productivity and it's going to impact how you feel about your life. And it will also impact your mindset for the rest of the day. And that's why now that we've done in days one, two, three, four, and five, we've done foundational training. You've learned a tremendous amount about how your brain works, about your default network, about how to be a deliberate thinker. You've spotted your limiting beliefs. You've learned how to think this, not that. You've started the skill and the practice of the skill. Remember, it's a process, not an event, to be a positive thinker. Um, you've started practicing, catching your limiting beliefs, and swapping from that default way of viewing the world and thinking about yourself and choosing deliberate thoughts. Now let's talk about physical habits that you can adopt that are very simple that will be life-changing because they will impact your ability to be in control of what you're thinking and to be deliberate. And that begins with how you wake up. So let me talk about the morning. You can think about your morning routine and whether or not you even have one in the exact same way that we think about the brain. You're either defaulting to something that you've always done that may not, no longer serve you, or you're getting deliberate and choosing to do something that's more positive and powerful because you deserve it. And that starts with your morning routine. So if you're the kind of person where the alarm goes off and you hit the snooze and then the alarm goes off again and you hit the snooze and you know eventually you roll out of bed and you step into your day and you maybe drink a big dark cup of coffee and you skip breakfast and you skip exercise and you're tired if that's how you start your day your mindset is going to be impacted by that if your alarm goes off and you immediately reach for your phone and you start scrolling through Instagram while you're in bed and looking at Facebook, and you are putting all kinds of stuff in your brain that triggers FOMO, that triggers insecurity, that triggers anxiety, that is going to impact your mindset for the rest of the day. And so starting tonight, I want you to take control and be more deliberate about your habits in the morning. And what we're gonna do this week is we are gonna build, based on science, the most powerful morning routine that you could possibly have. Sorry, I'm just moving this around so that the Instagram channel is brighter. The most powerful morning routine that you could possibly have based on science. It's super simple. It will help you become a more deliberate and positive thinker. And I'm gonna walk you through step by step. And you're gonna be doing this with more than 230,000 people around the world. So what is the assignment tonight? The assignment tonight is very simple and you're gonna hate it. You're totally able to do this, and most of you are not going to. 
you're going to let your limiting beliefs and your default mode of thinking stop you from making this simple change. And the thing that I want you to do tonight, this is your assignment. This smartphone right here, I don't want it anywhere near your bedroom. Your assignment is when you go to bed tonight, you are to plug your smartphone in outside of your bedroom. If you live in a studio apartment, put it on the other side of the room. I don't want this phone anywhere near where you sleep. And there's a simple reason why. You're addicted to it. And if it's next to you while you're sleeping, as soon as you wake up, without even thinking, the default mode of your brain will mindlessly reach for this and you will lie in bed and you will look at your phone. And when you do that, you are putting in garbage into your brain before you even get out of bed. If you wake up anxious, if you wake up overwhelmed, if you wake up feeling like you're losing some imaginary race, if you wake up and you feel dread, if you wake up and feel negative or exhausted, I'm telling you, this is the reason why. And if you want to have a positive mindset this year, and you deserve to, then you also have to get very deliberate about your habits and about your morning routine in particular. Because how you wake up matters. How you wake up determines your mood. How you wake up determines on your phone. Hold on. IG is pausing a lot. Hold on a second. Let's see here. Um, yikes. All right. Hold on a second, IG. Uh, I'm getting a lot of, uh, let's get on Wi-Fi. Rendezvous. Let's see if that works. Looks like I'm on. Let's go back to Instagram. Okay, let's see if that works. Is that better, Mandy? Um, thank you for your patience, by the way. Normally, our streams are not as spotty, but when we started this program, I knew that I was going to be traveling 24 out of the 35 days that we we're broadcasting live, and tech can be a challenge. And so for those of you that have been hanging in there on Instagram, if it's spotty, jump over to Facebook Live, jump over to YouTube, jump over to Twitter. We're streaming on all four platforms at once. Um, and we will also email you a link to this video, which is one of the reasons why, if you haven't yet, sign up for melrobins.com slash mindset reset, because we curate all this information for you and we tee it up for you every day. Um, so thank you for your patience as I am broadcasting from, uh, my parents' place. My mother's 70th birthday is tomorrow. And, um, for those of you that are just tuning in because the stream has been dicey, we're talking about the powerful connection between your mindset and your morning routine. In fact, I would say it's not even powerful. It's critical. You cannot have a positive in control mindset if you don't have control of your mornings. And it makes a lot of sense from a common sense standpoint, right? If you wake up and you're behind the ball, and if you wake up and you've got your phone in your face and you're not even out of bed yet, and you're looking at uh, everybody's perfect life on Facebook and on Instagram and on Twitter, or you're reading the news and getting stressed out, you're absolutely positively not going to start your day off right. So the Assignment that I have for you is a very simple one, and it's one that you're going to be tempted to ignore. Do not ignore this. Tonight, when you go to bed, you are to put your phone as far away from your bed as you possibly can. If you have a bedroom, get your phone charging outside of your bedroom. Turn the vibration off, and you can turn the ringer on. Um, and here's why. I know many of you are single parents. I know um, many of you have jobs where people need to get a hold of you. Uh, Instagram is reconnecting again, so I don't know what to make of this. Um, I apologize for the feed on Instagram, everybody. Uh, but if you, if you start your day by looking at this, your mind is hijacked and you're going to be playing catch up all day long. I want to give your brain a fighting chance to be deliberate. Tonight, what I want you to do is sleep without your phone. Plug your phone in outside of your room. And then when you get up, you're going to notice something. You're going to notice that you automatically reach for your phone. Your phone's not going to be there. You see, we're setting a trap. 
We're setting a trap so that you don't fall into the default mode of laying in bed and looking that thing. I want to give you a chance to catch your thoughts. I want to give you a chance to do a couple things in the morning based on science that will give you control over your day, that will boost your mood, and that will help you develop a much more deliberate and positive mindset. So you got it? If you're going to do this, I want you to put the, the uh, bicep pump curl you know, emoji or give me a thumbs up in the comments below if you're going to try this. Because it's a lot harder than you think. And even those of you that are like, oh, I don't look at my phone, baloney. Every one of us is addicted to this thing. I'd like to take some questions real quick about mindset, about the mindset um, morning routine connection, about the cell phone, or about anything related to mindset reset. Uh, Danielle from Facebook, I love routines as well, but what if you let go of your routine? Can you still embrace yourself and the day? I'm not sure I understand the question. I love routines as well. I think that yes, you can, rec if what you're basically saying is you have a morning where you don't do your normal routine and now it's noon and you realize, my gosh, I've spent the day, the morning in a negative mindset. Can you catch yourself? Absolutely. You absolutely at any moment during the day can catch negative beliefs. You can catch limiting beliefs. You can catch yourself when you default to the negative things that you've trained yourself to think. And you can five, four, three, two, one in five seconds flat. You can switch to a more positive belief. Absolutely. You can change your attitude like that. No question. You can put the force fields up if you feel yourself getting sucked into somebody else's drama. What I'm trying to tell you is that while that's possible, and while you should do that all day, particularly as you are practicing the skill of having a positive mind, I am here to tell you, based on personal experience, that when you start to own your morning, and when you start to take your morning routine seriously as a habit that you develop that contributes to your mindset and your happiness and your sense of control, it will change your life. If you're concerned about anxiety, having a morning routine that I'm going to walk you through step by step this entire week, this is key to curing yourself of anxiety. And it begins the night before. So Betsy asked, is it better to prep the night before? Absolutely. So the night before, I um, always plug my phone into the kitchen or I plug it into my closet. I turn off the alerts on my text messages. I turn off the buzzing and I leave the ringer on in case there's some kind of emergency. My kids know that they should call me if they need to reach me. We have a daughter who's in college and, you know, kids are all over the place these days. My business partner knows, call me if you need to reach me. Do not text me. And that one habit has changed my mindset for the better. It's changed my life for the better because when I wake up in the morning, I actually get out of bed. I don't scroll through my phone. And because my phone is nowhere near me, I don't even reach for it. I spend the first 30 minutes to an hour of my day before I even look at my phone, and it has been a game changer, both in my ability to cure my anxiety and in my ability to be deliberate about what I want, A, to be thinking about, and B, what I want to be focused on for this day. Um, uh, Tatiana on Instagram, I switch my phone to airplane mode or turn it off completely for the night. Is this okay or the equivalent? It's, it's definitely okay, but I don't want it near your bed because I don't even want you tempted to reach for this thing and to start scrolling through it. You, we, we live in a moment of time, here comes my father, where we need to have major boundaries with our phone. This right here, it's supposed to be a tool, but we have become the tool. Advertisers know that they can make money on your attention. So when you look at this, whether you're looking at your email or you're looking at Facebook or you're looking at social media, you are giving the world your most precious commodity, which is your attention. And so you're going to hear me hammer the fact that boundaries with this, essential for your mindset, essential for your happiness, essential for your success. Um, 
Vicky from Twitter, why is, is morning routine so important? What two to three items should be a part of it? Why is the morning routine so important? Couple things. How you wake up has a scientifically proven impact on your ability to focus, on your happiness, and on your productivity all day. This is not something I've made up. This is well-established research. And I'm going to be explaining it to you in bite-sized pieces all week long. And so to preview it, we're going to be talking about this tomorrow morning. The two to three pieces of it are, for me, I wake up when the alarm goes off. And I'm going to explain the science why the snooze alarm is uh, horrendous for your productivity. It actually impacts the way that your brain functions when you do it. We'll explain that in a training this week. I then get up, and for the first couple minutes of the day, I plan my day, and I have a particular process that I go through that leverages something from Harvard Business School called the Progress Principle. Uh, I have a mindfulness practice. That could be anything that you want. It could be gratitude journaling. It could be meditation. It could be five slow, deep breaths. It could be taking your, your dog outside for a walk. And then on mornings when I can, I have a micro exercise practice where I do planks for five minutes or I do something to get my blood pumping on the mornings that I can. I, and I do all that before I ever even look at my phone because I put myself and my mindset first deliberately before I ever allow the world access to my mind. You do not want anybody to have access to what's going on up here until you've gotten deliberate about what you're thinking about first. Um, so that's a preview, but I'm going to, as I promised, this was going to be bite-sized stuff. If you've, if you've already watched the first 10 minutes of this, you got the training for today, which is the powerful connection between your mindset and your morning routine. And your morning routine begins the night before when you plug your phone outside of your bedroom and you go to bed without your phone anywhere near you. Um, the other reason why that's important is we know based on research that the blue light on these things impacts your ability to fall into a deep sleep. Sleep is essential for you to have a healthy mindset. And also when you wake up, if this is next to you, 87% of adults sleep with their phones or next to their phones. And 33% of adults check email in the middle of the night. And so whether you're willing to admit that or not, we want to break your habit of giving the world access to your mind and we want to make you more deliberate about how you are with your phone and the reason why is it has a direct scientific researched impact on your mood and your mindset all day um, i have time for just one or two more questions uh, if you have any other questions about this seeing a ton of but my phone is my alarm i have kids do you see the excuses everybody what's more important if you have kids, do exactly what I told you. Leave the ringer on. If your kids need you, they can call you. If your boss needs you, they can call you. And this is really important for your kids too. You know, there's a lot of research about kids and phones and how they're hugely addicted. And the thing about kids and phones, particularly phones in their bedroom when they're going to sleep at night, is that if you have teenagers, teenagers are biologically hardwired to push away from their parents when they become teenagers. Their friends become their primary uh, support group. They become the most important thing in their life. And kids feel a obligation to stay connected to their friends. And they feel an obligation that if I'm not available for my friends, you know, that makes me not a good friend. And so to help your kids, you need to draw the boundaries for them. You need to tell them that they can't have their phone in the um, bedroom. You need to have a charging station in the kitchen and you need to model these very healthy and mandatory boundaries with technology, period. And so I get it. Your kids need to reach you. No problem. Plug it into the closet. Plug it into the bathroom. Turn the ringer on. If there's an emergency, they can call you. Yes, you can use your phone as your alarm. Plug it into the bathroom. Plug it into the closet. Plug it into the kitchen. Because if the alarm is going off 
outside of your bedroom or several paces away from your bed, guess what you're doing when the alarm goes off? You're getting up. And tomorrow, I'm going to explain the science behind why you need to get up when the alarm rings and why you should not hit the snooze alarm. I don't hit the snooze alarm because I understand the neurological impact that the act of snoozing has on your mindset, on your mood, and on your brain's ability to focus. And that's exactly what we're going to talk about tomorrow. The reason why you have to get up when the alarm rings, and it's not because it sounds like a good idea, it's because of the science behind how your brain works and what hitting the snooze button and drifting back to sleep for 15 minutes does to your mind. You're going to learn all about that tomorrow, and it is a game changer. So, Mandy and Danielle, do we have any other comments, questions, excuses? Give me the thumbs up if you're going to try this phone challenge. This is going to change your life. Try the phone challenge tonight. Give it one night. And I want you to notice as you do it, how drawn are you to your phone? How panicky are you that it's not near you? Do you feel anxious about it? When you wake up in the morning, are you immediately grabbing for it? I want you to notice the default mode that you have with this sucker right here. Because part of being deliberate and serious about being a healthy, happy, anxiety-free, positive, confident thinker is taking control and having boundaries between the world and your mind. And it's also having the assuredness that you can live without this thing. Hey, it's Mel, and I know I have been hammering the point that you have to create a routine if you want to be happy, successful, and uh, feel confident and in control. And so many of you have asked me, what is my morning routine? So today I decided to walk you through it. So I wake up at 6.15 to this alarm clock that simulates the sunrise. Then I pet my dog. Then I always make my bed. Uh, this is a really important tip. So the night before you uh, are going to sleep, lay out your exercise clothes because when you see them in the morning, it acts like a trigger in your mind to remind you of your promised exercise. And even though I get dressed, I don't feel like exercising. Here's another pro tip. I program my mind to be positive all day and I practice gratitude while brushing my teeth. I brush with my non-dominant hand, which is the hand that you normally don't write with, so I brush my teeth with my left hand because I'm a righty. And then as I am brushing my teeth with my left hand, I have to pay attention because uh, it's not really a natural thing to do. And as I'm paying attention, I have my gratitude practice where I think about what I'm grateful for. I love it when the spring flowers are coming up. We've turned our family room into a gym and uh, I have uh, tagged a bunch of the classes and instructors that I love for you to check out. Oh, got to go to the bathroom. Oh, there's Chris. Uh, now let's get started with the class. Braxton, here we go. Oh, forgot my water bottle. I have terrible ADD. It is true. What do I put in my water bottle? Baraka. Holly Jacobs from Sony Pictures Television. I love you for introducing me to this. Kind of hard to exercise when you have a puppy, but makes you grateful. Uh, what do I eat for breakfast? Either a smoothie or eggs from the chickens across the street. And I'm telling you right now, your morning routine is everything. So get up early and find time for yourself. So there you have it. That's my typical morning routine and it never fails. Every morning that I stick to my routine, I have a much more powerful day. And the mornings that I don't stick to the routine suck honestly, because I wake up behind the ball. When I get up, when the alarm rings, I have made and kept a promise to myself. When I make the bed, I am uh, completing something before I leave the bedroom. And I also, whenever I walk back into the bedroom, I see something that has been accomplished. I don't see a mess that needs to be completed. Um, by prioritizing my physical and mental health, and getting some exercise in, I not only feel better mentally, but I also release chemicals in my brain that helps me focus. There is no doubt that having a powerful morning routine is part of every successful person's programs, 
It is something that you deserve. It is something that you should create for yourself. And it is something that will improve your life. Now, I want to challenge you. Put your morning routine tomorrow morning on social media. Put it on your stories. Uh, do a collage of photos. And please tag me and describe your morning routine because I am going to be watching. I'm going to be cheering for you. And I'm going to be celebrating people on my story for the next week who are putting their morning routines out there. Remember, morning routines are amazing. So make one that works amazingly well for you. The first page walks you for through for free my journaling method. Why am I teaching you this? Because I have I have studied morning routines, journaling methods, the science of productivity. It has taken me three years to figure out the perfect morning routine journaling method. It takes me less than five minutes, less than five minutes. Each prompt in the journaling method is backed by science. It is designed to make your mindset more powerful. It's designed to give you control. It's designed to leverage the world's most powerful research around focus and around happiness. And literally it takes you less than five minutes. I'm gonna walk you through step-by-step step this week, the science behind each one of the prompts. I invite you to print this out. I invite you to go to the five second journal and look at the science. And I invite you to think about what's working for you so you can create a morning routine that really empowers your mindset. Because I don't want you to wake up in the morning and immediately let the world in. You're under siege all day long from the world, from your friends, from your work, from your emails, from your social media, from the television, from the 24-hour news cycle. Your dreams deserve 10 to 30 minutes in the morning for you to get your head on straight, for you to focus yourself on things that are positive, for you to figure out how to build momentum and make progress on something that matters to you today, and for you to work on building your deliberate way of thinking so that by doing so, you're going to reprogram your default network in your brain so that your mind automatically starts filtering the world in a way that works for you. That's why I'm teaching you this, because it's all building on the things you learned in week one, on days one, two, three, four, and five, okay? We're on day nine now. So the first prompt is very, very simple. And the first prompt is all about your mood. So the second that you wake up, remember you're going to get out of bed, if your alarm is your phone, you're going to turn the alarm off, but you're going to leave your phone where it is, and you're not going to take your phone with you to journal, because I do not want you tempted to even look at it. I want your head clear. I want you present. I want 10 lousy minutes for your dreams. Don't your dreams deserve that? Doesn't your sanity and your happiness and your sense of control deserve 10 lousy minutes in the morning? Of course it does. So the first thing I want you to think about is your mood. And the reason why I'm starting with your mood is because there is tremendous research about your mood in the morning and how the mood that you have in the morning and the energy level that you have can impact your confidence all day long. It can impact your productivity all day long. And it's super important for you to do something first thing in the morning to get present to your mood and your energy and then do something intentional to boost it because that will have an established science-backed proven impact on your productivity and your focus and your happiness all day long. So there's a very simple prompt at the top. It just is, how do I feel? This is your inner compass. This, this is how you read your energy. Um, it's a little scale, much like a gas tank in a car from empty to full, depleted is empty and full is energized. Me this morning, I woke up feeling meh, meh. You wanna, and then over here, you're gonna explain why do you feel this way. Now it's important to identify why you feel meh or why you feel energized and excited because it makes you present. You see, we're tuning you into your inner wisdom. We are teaching you how to be present and mindful. And even if when you get present, you get present to something that's negative, we're teaching you how to turn it around. See, negative isn't bad, it just is what it is. When you recognize that you woke up and you're feeling meh, which is how I felt this morning, now that you're present to it, you've got the power to get deliberate and shift it. 
So why did I wake up and go, meh, I'll tell you why. Because there was a, some woman in the room next to me who was awake at 4.15 this morning yapping to the person next to her. They weren't, you know, doing anything that I hate hearing in a hotel room, other people through the wall, if you know what I mean, I'm keeping this family friendly. But she was just talking and talking and talking. And then I woke up again at 4.37, and I woke up again at 5.12, and I woke up again at 5.57, and then I woke up again at 6.20, and then I just got up. I mean, my alarm hadn't even gotten up yet. And I was so annoyed, and that's why it was like, meh, because of this chick next to me in the hotel room. I was so, that is actually the first thing that I said to Mandy. So I wrote down, I feel this way because I kept getting interrupted in my sleep and woken up by this person and that bothered me. And the other reason why I feel meh is my neck kind of hurts. Sleeping in so many hotel beds, it's been lousy for my 50 year old neck. So now the next thing that you're gonna do, how long did that take? Five seconds, five seconds to circle this, five seconds to explain why. Now the next one, most important, to feel more energized, I can. We wanna boost your mood in the morning. It takes five seconds to think about it. So I wrote down, I'm gonna get up and exercise. So my business partner, Mandy and I, we schlepped our way to a soul cycle class, a 45 minute spin class here. It was, I am not, I'm not in spin shape. That's what I learned this morning. But let me tell you, it boosted my energy. So in just those three five second questions, I have leveraged very profound and powerful science around mood to take control of my mindset. I could have easily in my old life woken up, been interrupted by some woman next door to me in the hotel all night long, been annoyed about it, carried that like, oh, I didn't get enough sleep all through my entire day. All through my entire day. How many of you have done that? You got a lousy night's sleep or somebody interrupted you when you're sleeping in a hotel, like what happened to me, or the dog barked and had to go out at three o'clock in the morning, or maybe one of your kids came home after a night of partying and then you were upset and you had to deal with that. And then you went back and so you wake up and your mood is lousy. And then all day long, you basically make one moment where you wake up in a bad mood become a bad day. You're not gonna do that anymore. That's the power of a mindset reset. And that's why you're going to start with mood when you wake up. We have already covered the science around the way that your brain works. We have already discussed how you have a default network of neurons and neural pathways in your brain that filter the world. They allow what comes in and what comes out. We've talked about limiting beliefs. We've trained you on the power of being a deliberate thinker. We've trained you on how you think this instead of thinking that when you have very negative beliefs. And now we're in the portion of the program where we're talking about the power of your morning routine. Why is a morning routine critical for your mindset? The reason why your morning routine is critical for your mindset is a couple reasons. Number one, let's just think common sense. If you wake up and you feel horrible and you're in a bad mood and you pick up your phone or you turn on the news and the first inbound information that hits your brain is negative or it triggers something in you emotionally that is negative you are starting your day off on the wrong foot and you might even have a habit that if you wake up and the day begins as a bad day that you then spend the rest of your day convincing yourself that this entire day is a bad day that is a major mistake it's also not true because you get to choose how you view what's happening around you. And the second reason why your morning routine is critical is because the first two hours that your brain is awake are the best two hours for your brain all day. And so I believe that if you create a very powerful morning routine and the one that I am recommending that you start off with and then you make it your own. You add in things, you take away things that you don't use or that you're not going to like. But everything I'm recommending is based on the science around productivity, focus, happiness, um, the way that your mind is actually wired to work. And that's why I'm recommending everything that I've been recommending in the program. I will explain very briefly the steps of the morning routine, but if this is the first video you're watching, it's day 11. Go back to day nine, go back to day 10, where I really 
begin talking about the power of a morning routine, why it's important, and I explain the science in detail. For today's training, we're going to talk about the third step in your morning routine. So when you get to the third step, by this point, you have already woken up on time and gotten out of bed when the alarm rang. You didn't hit the snooze button. You've already turned off the alarm on your phone if you're using your phone for your alarm. You have not looked at your phone. You have not turned on the TV. You have not let any information from the outside world cross the threshold into your precious brain yet. Why? Well, the reason why is I believe that you and your dreams, they deserve 10 lousy minutes. In fact, I think they deserve an hour. But I'm just going to go with 10 minutes because I know that you can find 10 lousy minutes to focus on your dreams, to focus on becoming a deliberate thinker, to plan out your day, and to figure out what your priority is. Good morning. I'm talking quietly because my daughter's sleeping. I woke up this morning and I was feeling really anxious. And what that means for me is the second that I wake up, my heart is racing and I start feeling like something's wrong. And I know this feeling because I've had anxiety for decades. It doesn't come around that much anymore, but when it does, oof, it takes me right back. So I wanted to just grab the phone and show you what I do when I wake up feeling anxious. First of all, rule number one, do not under any circumstances lay in bed if you wake up and you feel anxious about something. You have got to use the five second rule, five, four, three, two, one, get up, get out of bed, get moving. Cause if you can get up, you can get going. If you can get going, you can get dressed. If you can get dressed, you can move your body. If you can move your body, you can then move your emotions. If you can move your emotions, you can then move your mind. If you can move your mind, you can move your mood. So one thing leads to another. Number one, get up. But rule number two is remind yourself that you're okay. Talk back to the anxiety. Why was I feeling anxious? Well, I was feeling a little anxious because I'm out here in Los Angeles to move our daughter back into her sophomore year of college. And I'm gonna miss her. I'm flying home today and I'm just sad. I'm sad that I'm leaving her. And all goodbyes, all transitions always bring up this sort of fear and this unsteadiness in me because your anxiety is gonna get worse if you allow yourself to keep thinking the negative thought. I just kept saying, I'm safe, she's safe, we're okay. Um, it's okay to be sad, you're gonna see her in a couple months. And the anxiety started to disappear. Third step, I want you to get your exercise clothes on. That's right, once you get up, and you get going, get your exercise clothes on. Um, the next thing you're gonna do, make your bed. I'm gonna do that as soon as I'm done making this video. She's still sleeping. I'll still make my side of the bed even though she's in that bed because I make my bed for myself. It's a little promise I keep. Um, when I make my bed, I give myself a gift because I will be lying down in it and uh, it has a beautiful, gives me a beautiful place to dream tonight. And even though I'm in a hotel right now, I'm still gonna make my bed because it's a habit. And habits are really amazing patterns to create in your life. And the thing about a good habit is it creates a solid foundation for you. So by making the bed, I am uh, showing myself that the pattern that I normally go through is right here, even in a moment of anxiety. Now, what am I gonna do after I'm gonna move my body? Now, I don't have a yoga mat in this hotel room. That's all right. I'm gonna come right over here to this wood floor, and I'm gonna do some yoga right here. Because moving my body moves the anxiety out. And then I'm gonna sit down and I'm gonna move my mind. And this is the final thing. The way that I move my mind is I typically use the five second journal. But this morning, the way I'm gonna move my mind is I'm gonna do a brain dump and I'm just gonna pull out a piece of paper. It doesn't have to be fancy. I'm probably gonna use this piece of paper right here. And I'm going to write down every single thing that is on my mind. You don't have to let anxiety hijack you. You can 
meet those moments, whether those moments are moments when you wake up first thing in the morning and you feel anxious like I did this morning here in Los Angeles, or whether it's anxiety that comes at night or the anxiety that sort of is your companion right now during the day. Anxiety is a normal part of life. And by having a simple process for meeting it and not reacting to it, but responding to it, you will see a profound difference in your ability to move through your life and face the roadblocks and obstacles that life throws at you and just keep rolling down the highway. It's an amazing skill. It is uh, just before eight o'clock on a Sunday morning. Chris and I are headed to Owl's Head Peak here in Southern Vermont. At <laughs> Try to catch a good view. One thing that I love about you, other than the fact that you almost just drove into a ditch, <laughs> is that you're always like up and at them, up and at them. Hi, YOLO. Um, Early bird gets the worm. That's right, and the view. Um, I was just about to ask Chris a question, and I thought you should know that this is a question that I think about every morning when I wake up. Here's the question. What's your one goal today for yourself? Make it, make it something that matters to you. Uh, not a should, not an obligation, something that, that matters to you that you want to do for you and then decide who you're going to be today. Wake up and ask those two questions and it, it, it's extraordinary how much it impacts you having a great day where you feel in control. My goal today is to spend time with your hubby. That's so cute. That's not what I was going to say. <laughs> My goal today is to sit down and set a timer for an hour and write. That's my main goal. And who I'm gonna be today is I'm gonna practice being present. One of my goals was to go for a hike, so we're doing that, check. But it was to write also, so I'm gonna adopt your one hour rule. Okay. that when you're writing, I'm writing. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you going to be? Who am I going to be? I'm going to be... Um, joyful. <laughs> what does that look like? It's sort of uncharacteristic for me, I think. Well, I think you're inwardly happy and joyful, but not outwardly expressive of it. You're very contemplative. So let me right. rephrase. I will be celebratory. To the usual Ooh, words. that's good. Will you please watch the road? Well, you know, look, you got me on camera. I'm present to the... everything. I, I can't drive and be on video at the same time, all right? <laughs> all right. <laughs> well, we made it. Check it out. Yolo, you tired? Woo! Who are you gonna be today? And what's your goal for today? Uh, now that we've uh, climbed this peak, it's time to go right. It's really an interesting trick of the mind. And like you, I have this similar sense of, I want to be able to want it for people. Yeah. And the one thing in my life that I am very grateful for is that I know how to build desire. I know how to go down the process of wanting something. What, what is that process for you of desire? Because most what I found in this book is here's the thing for most people, and I'm hoping that your process will attack this. What I've discovered that is heartbreaking is the average person cannot celebrate themselves Cannot, I'm gonna ask everybody who's watching this to tomorrow morning stand in front of the mirror, we're gonna unpack this whole thing and try to high five yourself. And most Really people, fast, give people the, the science behind why that's meaningful. So I have this habit of every single morning, I stand in front of the mirror and I take a moment and I raise my hand and I give my reflection a high five. 
And there is so much science behind this. So instead of seeing yourself, right, and have, having this moment in the mirror, you know what the average person does? First of all, we beat ourselves down. So I would look in the mirror for 40 some years and be like, oh my God, my freaking jowls look like saddlebags on a goddamn horse going in the Grand Canyon. My eyes have, a, my neck is only striped, my boob, one boob's hanging lower than the other. I look like shit, my gray hair. Like I start bringing myself down. And when you start going down that road with your reflection, then your thoughts go to, I didn't get to that email. I forgot to text Lisa back. I, oh my gosh, the dog still needs to be walked. I've got nine minutes for my first Zoom call. You're now checking out. And that moment in the mirror every morning could be a profound moment where you lift yourself up and you check back in with your intention. So the first piece of research, and this is recent from Harvard Business School, is that a simple moment in the morning where you set an intention about who you're going to be today impacts productivity, how you show up as a leader, it impacts your confidence, it impacts your mood all day long, just that simple moment of setting an intention. So that's research number one. Instead of standing in front of the sink in your bathroom and criticizing your appearance or mindlessly going on autopilot, check back in and let's teach you to make it a habit to lift yourself back up. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode brought to you by our sponsors at Athletic Greens. To receive a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase, visit athleticgreens.com slash impact theory. Enjoy the episode. Second piece of research, and this comes from a whole field of study called neurobics. Neurobics is like aerobics for your mind. I didn't make this up. <laughs> this is literally you can speed up the development of new neural pathways by marrying physical activity with a change in thought. And so traditionally, I know you've covered this on your show, if you, for example, were to brush your teeth, I'm a right-hander, if you were to brush it with your other hand and think uh, a new thought, the fact that your brain is focusing on brushing with your non-dominant hand activates more focus on the new thought, it accelerates the learning. So you take neurobics, a physical activity with a different thought, and let me, let's talk about a high five, for example. What does a high five mean to you? That somebody did something awesome or I did something awesome. Correct. And if you think about the times in your life when you've gotten a high five, it's because somebody's like, Tom, you're amazing. Tom, get your attitude out of the can. You got this. Tom, you're going to make this shot. Tom, we can still win. I believe in you. Keep going. You have a lifetime positive association with giving other people high fives stored right here in your subconscious mind. When you raise your hand to your own reflection, it is impossible for you to think, God, I look fat. Boy, <laughs> am I an asshole. I really screwed up my life. You can't do it because your lifetime association with this motion is all I believe in you, I got you, I see you, I celebrate you. And so you, in the moment of doing it, override decades of negative self-talk. It's incredible. Now, have you ever gotten a high five where somebody misses the hand or it's sort of like, it sucks, of right? Of course, yeah. Yeah, what do you do when that happens? I redo it. Correct. Yeah. That's because a high five requires you to be present and there is an intention behind it. So you can't raise your hand to your own reflection without now grounding yourself in the moment. That's just the beginning of the research. I can go on about the NBA. And Dude, the, that, okay. that was my favorite part. Hearing about the NBA, like even now it's giving me chills. Like, and especially because we're recording this still as everybody thought we were getting out of the pandemic and now we've got the, the variant. Now even I'm starting to worry about the lack of physical contact and yeah. just like this, the, the cues that we give each other through yeah. touch like that. So yeah, yeah th this was one of my favorite parts of the book. Yeah, the NBA thing. Oh, I love this research too because you know what happened with the high five is, look, I did this on a low moment for myself. Like, so my brand of self-help is Mel's life is kind of <laughs> fucked up at the moment and she can't figure out how to help herself. So she stumbles by accident on something really stupid on its face and it feels good. And then I share it with my audience 
And if they pick up on it and they, then I'm like, okay, we're on to something. So for me, the high five, Tom, began, I'm fired from my talk show. My book contract is canceled. Every speech has been canceled. My kids are now home. So we've got three kids, 22, 20, uh, age 15, all in varying states of distress. I am triggered because my origin story, as you know, from being on the show and us being friends, the five second rule was 12 years ago losing everything. And so I'm now having this feeling like I'm about to lose everything. And I'm also feeling like I'm losing grip on reality as the pandemic is hitting and as my kids are in distress. And I don't know what to do, just like everybody on the planet. I find myself in my bathroom one morning in my underwear and I am having this spiral of negative thoughts. I look like shit. I don't know how to fix this. I wish somebody would solve this for me. I feel overwhelmed. I feel scared about my parents' health. I feel scared about everybody on the front lines. And even though I'm literally like you, somebody that empowers other people, I didn't know what the fuck to say to myself. And as pathetic as it sounds, I found myself just raising my hand, just in a way to basically be like, Shut up, Mel. Come on, girl. You, like, put your shoulders back, lift your chest. You, you got this. You can do this. And something shifted, and I went on with my day. And then the next morning, I walk into my bathroom, and this is the other weird thing about the high five. I've literally either criticized myself or ignored myself in the mirror for decades. When you start to have a moment with yourself, the crazy part is you start to build a partnership with yourself. That's interesting. Like... You know, when you are pulling out of your driveway or you're walking down the street and you see a neighbor and they greet you, you will start to have that experience when you create this intentional moment with yourself in the mirror every morning. And so as I started to do this, I thought this is actually making me feel like the wind is at my back when I leave the bathroom. It's making me feel just like when you leave a huddle in sports and you high five, or you're a runner running a race or doing some big endurance challenge and some spectator high fives you or another racer is like, come on, you got this as you're dragging down low. It gives you a little energy. Like I think too about this high five a lot. Like I know we're, you know, you're friends with David Goggins. I'm a huge fan of Goggins. And so, and I know there's a lot of people that watch this show, especially men that are like, this sounds kind of stupid. This is the equivalent of Goggins cookie jar moment. So we all think like we've all been raised like tough love, hard on myself, this bullshit. The research is clear on this. Being hard on yourself is not fucking motivating. It's demotivating. And if you already feel like a failure or you feel a sense of shame or you're overwhelmed, beating yourself up for where you are does not fucking work. It drives you into the gutter. The most motivating force in the world, on the planet, based on research, hands down, is empowerment, encouragement, support, and celebration. And for our entire lives, we have outsourced that to somebody else. The research is very clear. So the NBA study, they did this big study looking at NBA teams. And they could predict in the study who was going to be in the championship rounds based on, in the preseason, what teams had the most high fives, fist bumps, and back pats. Why? Because those kind of gestures create partnership and trust. And I'm here to tell you, when you start doing it in the mirror, you're creating partnership and trust with yourself. And so, you know, one of the things that I love about this is that in a moment when you feel alone, you can give yourself the boost, the support, the empowerment that you need to keep going. And here's another piece of research that's also like, holy cow, you're a big proponent of the growth mindset. You guys talk about it all the time on this show, right? So researchers wanted to know, what is the most empowering way to motivate kids through a really big challenge, okay? They divide the kids into three groups. This takes the marshmallow test to a whole nother level. You got one group of kids that are doing a challenging task and they're getting the fixed mindset praise, which we all know does not work. Oh, Tom, you're so smart. Oh, Tom, I love your glasses. That's going to help you. Oh, Tom, you got a great smile. Oh, Tom, you know, I, I just love so much about you. I know you can do this. 
So that's one group. The second group gets the growth mindset kind of praise. Tom, you are such a hard worker. Tom, your perseverance is unbelievable. Tom, you just keep going. That does better, obviously, than telling you that you're smart because it makes you motivated to work hard. The third group, they just got a simple high five. The researchers didn't even say anything to the kids. They just walked up, gave them a high five. The group of kids that got a simple high five outperformed, outworked through all of the challenges, all of the other forms of praise. Why? Because a high five is something deeper than praise. It fulfills your most fundamental needs as a human being. When somebody high fives you, you feel seen, you feel heard, and you feel like somebody has acknowledged you for the unique person that you are. Let's just talk for a second about the things that go viral. You can always find going viral a teacher standing outside of a classroom doing what? Greeting kids with individual handshakes. And we see that and we're like, oh, that's amazing. Why? Because every one of those kids before they walk into the classroom feels seen, they feel heard, and they feel acknowledged for the unique individual that they are all through a simple handshake or high five. And one of the reasons why I'm so excited about this is because in starting to just kind of put it out there very casually uh, on the story, you know, in the very beginning, because I've been researching this now for a year, um, I started to get back all of the objections that people had to doing it. And they're fucking sad, Tom. And this gets to the heart of why I think so many people are stuck. One of the biggest objections that people had to standing in front of the mirror, take a moment, look at yourself, and then raise your hand, is people said over and over and over again, I haven't done anything worthy of high-fiving. High-fiving feels like a celebration. I don't have the number on the scale that I want. I don't like my bank account. I don't enjoy what I do for a living. I've made a shitload of mistakes I'm struggling with trauma. I don't have anything to celebrate. And what I realized is people are making a fundamental mistake. You are withholding the very support, empowerment, and celebration that you need to change and to do the hard work and to face the things that you're scared of. And that's why you're not changing. This is so interesting. So I'm gonna push you on this. I'm yep. super curious, because yep. one of the things I love about you is you're so blunt and mm -hmm. honest about, hey, if you wanna have self-worth, you have to do things that you think yep. are worthy. I'm a huge proponent of that. And yet I do recognize that you have to let yourself off the hook to really get started. So how do you help people anchor on something? Is it just, hey, it's the fucking neurochemistry of the situation, you have to do it? Yeah, pretty much. Because if you can't stand in front of the mirror and raise your hand and high five yourself just because you got your ass out of bed and you're breathing, you will never get what you want in life, ever. There is something in the resistance to it. And if you unpack the resistance, you will find the reason why you don't have what you want. You either think you're not worthy of it or you think that it's kind of stupid or you have been brought up to believe that for, for women in particular, you're gonna be bitchy or selfish or not likable if you're celebrating yourself. There is something in the resistance to you simply cheering for yourself. So talk to the person though that, so as of right now, they, they really believe the world has shown them that they aren't worthy. It's not like they question it, they know it to be true. Yeah. How do you help people, because I recognize that as a lie, or even if it's true, right, it's useless, right. but how do you help people out of that moment? So the first thing that I would say is, how is treating yourself as if you're unworthy helping you? Like, let's just get strategic and common sense about it. Is the negative shit you're saying and the support that you're withholding helping you feel better? If it's not, Try this. Try celebrating yourself five days in a row. Literally, try starting your day by waking up and raising your hand and high-fiving yourself in the mirror just because you're breathing and see what happens. Uh, we have a, a, a woman that wrote to us who's in a domestic violence shelter. Oof. 
She's lost everything. She's been in abusive relationships. She has a tremendous amount of childhood trauma. She is doing the high five habit, and here's what she had to say about it. I have nothing right now. I have a tremendous amount of evidence from my life that I have fucked everything up. But you know what this high five habit is showing me? I still have me. I can have my own back. I can be here for myself. The world has told me and convinced me that I can't, but every morning when I stand here and I stare at myself in the mirror and I raise my hand in defiance of all the shit that's happened to me, I keep going. I am saying I believe in myself. And when you have that small reversal, that small act of defiance, and that's what it is. If you're like heavy and you're eating emotionally or you're feeding your trauma, when you raise your hand and celebrate yourself, even though you don't like what you look like, it's an act of fucking defiance to all the stuff that you have survived in your life. And the best part about it, you don't have to fucking say anything. And you know, the reason why this is so important is most mantras are complete bullshit because you don't believe it. You know, it's a, there's a, we all know we need to accept ourselves. We all know we need to love ourselves, but how? How do you do it to your point when you have a bunch of evidence stacked up that you've failed or reasons that you see that make you feel like you've blown it or you're not worthy of it? I'll tell you how. You freaking raise your hand and high five yourself anyway because beating yourself up will not make you do the work to get healthy. And tearing yourself down over the shit that you've done or the terrible relationships that you're in, it's not gonna empower you to change the patterns that are keeping you stuck. But raising your hand in an act of defiance or a fuck you to the past that you survived and saying, I'm still here, which means I still have a shot to change my life. That is what this means. Hey, it's Mel. Thank you so much for being here. If you enjoyed that video, by God, please subscribe because I don't want you to miss a thing. Thank you so much for being here. We've got so much amazing stuff coming. Thank you so much for sending this stuff to your friends and your family. I love you. We create these videos for you. So make sure you subscribe. Mwah.